distant country, a country of islands, wind and sea. You're in the Philippines. In between Borneo and Taiwan, this volcanic archipelago surrounded by three seas remains to this day largely unexplored. It's the archipelago at the far edge of the Pacific, almost forgotten by maritime Asia. Surrounded by sea, there are islands all around you. Islands which are all very different. Wild islands, private islands, islands where ancient village communities still live. It is here that Jack has had his own boat made so he can embark on his unique journey. Alongside Eddie, he launched Tao, which means people in Filipino. It allows a few travelers to discover these far-flung parts of the Philippines, very close to some of the few places on Earth still protected from tourism. Um, between Corona and El Nido, there's so many beautiful islands, and it's every traveler's dream when they first pick up the travel guide of the Philippines and it's 7,107 islands and, and there's this idea of traveling from one island to another to another. Just uh, rock up on a beach, camp there for a the night, have a bonfire, grill some fish, set off the next day, go in any, every, every island you know you can visit. When we started the project, uh, we were really exploring the whole route. After doing two years of this, um, we've, we found like four really good overnight stops. Because an overnight stop, you can't stop on any, any island. You know, some islands might be too small, you don't get a good anchor for the boat, there may be no fresh water. So there's a, quite a lot of factors that have to come into, into a good overnight spot. And now we've, we've built up a, a real uh, range of different, uh, different experiences for, uh, for our guests. The islands where Teo work have intentionally remained undeveloped. There are just a few traditional houses which welcome you and where you can spend the night. For years, Jack's dream was to escape from the world and sleep under the stars. A young English architect, he finally left London to get a taste of this very different life. Jack and Eddie's idea gives direction to his travels. Far from mass tourism, one can sample more authentic experiences through everyday interactions in a region that is still mostly unexplored. With, with 
this trip, especially with the expedition, is you, you spend five days going from Coron, moving through the islands, and you see the, the change in geography as you go. You get a real feeling of where well, you are. You're traveling through the islands. Stopping, oh, that's a nice stop. Let's just stop there. In this region, nature is omnipresent. The seabed boasts countless reefs, where more than 3,000 species of fish, 20,000 types of shellfish, and 500 species of coral live. But behind the postcard image that the Philippines projects, the reality can be far from sweet. Blast fishing still continues in the Philippines, causing the indiscriminate destruction of coral reefs and marine life. And a large number of coral reef fish are still caught to end their days in aquariums around the world or on tables in Asian restaurants. Despite all this, with their knowledge of the islands, Teo invites you to discover areas that are still protected. Originally from a mountain tribe in the north of the Philippines, Eddie has spent more than 10 years of his life exploring these small islands. On the island of Daracotton, in exchange for water, fish and shelter for the night, Eddie and Jack offer their support to communities in the form of long-lasting projects, like medical care, a motor for a boat, or a small primary school. Good morning, class. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Classmate, all right. Teo believe that if they are to profit from the island's quiet beaches and visits to villages, then the families must also benefit. We have a good relationship with them. Obviously, at the same time, we want to be connected still with, with the communities and the projects that we're doing here. The tourism area is actually moving up north now to the remote areas where the islands are sited for, for a potential resort. And all of this thing, you know, we've been, it's been ours, it's, it's been our playground for five years now and I think we've got another three to five years more. It's really hard to, to imagine that this place will stay like this forever. Tourism is good as long as everyone, the community, the families, benefits from it. But if only a few people benefits from it, then tourism is not really helping at all. After a five-day trip under the stars, on beaches and out at sea, the journey ends here, on this small strip of sand. Jack and Eddie's project is unique in this area of the Philippines due to its relaxed pace, basic comfort and the idea that sometimes one can lose all sense of time. I feel very disconnected from, from what's going on really because all we there's no clock reminding us what time it is or calendar showing us what day it is. Yeah, I think that was really rare, this type of trip. Mm. I think we're really lucky. Elsewhere, lots of other islands like Thailand, you know, yeah. it would be 
forward to people. Saturated. Yeah. yeah. And to be able to be on an island and on a beach and not see anyone, I think we're really lucky. Right. Yeah. You do feel very remote, which is hard to get, isn't it? Mm. Mm. In the far west of the Philippines, Palawan is one of the wildest islands of this archipelago, a forgotten land in the final frontier before Indonesia. This island is a nature reserve, and the whole province has been designated a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. Over the course of millennia, Different peoples have come to this island, bringing with them their customs and beliefs. Pygmies, Indonesians, Malaysians, Chinese, all these nationalities gave rise to the plethora of different communities where today almost 100 dialects are spoken. Today, several islands of the Philippines engage in responsible tourism, like Donsol, in the south of the archipelago. Up until the 90s, the fishermen in Donsol Bay hunted the largest fish in the world because of the quantity of meat they could get from a single catch and the quality of its fins, of which the Chinese are real connoisseurs. Later, this previously unknown area has become the world capital of the giant of the sea, the whale shark. Distance of three meters from the body and the head and four meters from the tail because swimming behind it is too dangerous for us. Then no flash photography, no scuba diving and only six swimmers are allowed to swim with the whale shark and to get in the water. Every year, more than 7,000 visitors come diving to Donsol to observe the giant of the sea close up. With a mouth two meters in diameter, which swallows more than a ton of plankton and krill per day, as long as a bus and as heavy as six elephants, this fish first emerged more than 60 million years ago. Despite its impressive size and weight, this giant of the sea is not a threat to man, one of its predators. The guides on this ecotourism program are all former fishermen who previously hunted these very whale sharks. For us, being a guide is a real alternative. We earn a living from tourism and particularly from the whale shark. So the number of whale sharks is rising every year. Donsol is their true home. They feed and reproduce here.
Every morning, Leanne sounds her conch shell to welcome the world. Having travelled the world for over 20 years, Leanne, an Australian, has finally discovered the most beautiful place in the world, Malapakau. Everything is awakening, beginning to unfold, new things to experience, the pleasure of stillness. Yes, it's a very beautiful Leanne settled here at the beginning of the 80s and opened a naturopathy centre. Here, the winds of the 70s blow and there's that feeling of living outside the set of established norms. I was obviously destined to come here. I had to be the caretaker of this beautiful place. So when I came here, it was just a dream come true. I had seen 20 years outside and I had explored beautiful places and until today, 24 years later, I live in the most beautiful place in the world. Why would I go out of here? No, I have no desire to explore anywhere else in the world because I have found paradise. Leanne's greatest dream was to have her own tropical garden where all the plants that Earth could offer would grow, like a gift from heaven. I have been blessed to learn about health and the value of herbs. So now I've become a herbalist, a master herbalist of all the plants here. We create our own herbal medicine, we create tinctures and poultices, uh, we, we make dried powders, encapsulate them, and when people leave here, we in fact give them, we say, this is what you can do, this is what you can learn, here's what you buy out there in the stores. Herbal teas and coconut milk, banana leaves and ginger, vegetables and flowers, all meals on Malapakau are completely vegetarian. With all her plants, Leanne the herbalist invents ingenious mixes which are based on colour as much as flavour. You try it. And you try again, you experiment, and you taste, and you improve every day you grow. You sit back, you make a few bad, uh, bad recipes. It's easy to change them. Add a little bit of honey, add a little bit of basil, and you can create beautiful dishes. Prepare it with love and color. Lots of variety, lots of interesting colors, like the artist palette. And then when a person looks at the food, they feel good about what they're eating. Macrobiotic food, non-smoking clients and yoga classes, the island of Malapakau welcomes you into a wholly natural environment conceived and built by Leanne. What can be experienced here is completely original and reserved only for those travellers on a quest for a unique retreat. The majority of people spend three to four months on Malapakau this very special island. 
think that too many people nowadays have forgotten. They chase their tail. They work. They don't even realize what they're doing. And they need to step back. And they need to find some balance in their lives. Try and throw away the things they don't need. And just keep what they need in their lives. Live a simple life. And that's what I'm here for. To be a role model of simplicity. That's my goal. That's my future. That's the end of story. <laughs>